Welcome to an introduction to accounting brought to you by Parkbench Tutors. In this podcast we are going to introduce the idea of different types of business and in particular we're going to look first of all at sole traders and partnerships. Let's begin by just considering what all business organizations do. They're basically there to provide goods or services uh, they've got objectives, a business needs to be organized and managed, it's got to be accountable. If there are any legal requirements, it must stick to them, and it's got to have some sort of structure. Now that doesn't matter whether it's a sole trader, a partnership, or even a public limited company, or a private limited company, or whatever. It's still going to have those characteristics of a business organization. So we can classify or group businesses then into private sector and public sector. The private sector is probably what you are more uh, comfortable with in that we normally talk in terms of private sector rather than public sector companies. We can have a very simple idea by when we say that there are two types of businesses in the private sector. They can be unincorporated or they can be incorporated and what we're going to look at in this podcast is essentially the unincorporated business because there's no legal difference between the owner and the business and that means we're talking about sole traders and partnerships whereas in an incorporated business there is legally a separate identity from the owners and they refer to public limited companies and private limited companies now I know you'll be told at some point that uh, you have to keep the business uh, transactions separate from personal transactions for sole traders and partnerships that's true but there's still a liability for the owners it's not the same as an incorporated company where they are a separate legal entity from the owners a sole trader is often known also as a sole proprietor where the business is owned by one person they can of course employ other people but there's only one owner and they're usually small businesses hairdressers farmers painters plumbers and so on and many fast food uh, outlets such as fish and chip shops however you might remember that some of the early businesses were not uh, very small even though they were sole traders so in you take the history of your own area uh, mills etc very often were owned up by one particular person and employed large numbers of people there are a number of legal requirements for sole traders they have to register for VAT when turnover reaches a certain amount that's when their sales reach a certain amount and in 2012 I believe this was 77,000 They've got to pay income tax, national insurance. If you are a sole trader, you can't ex uh, escape that, I'm afraid. And in some cases, if you are supplying particular services, such as a taxi service, you have to have a license. Or if you are supplying or selling alcohol, you must have a license. And if you change the use of a premises, you must have planning permission. So if you plan to set up a business, such as a fast food outlet, um, and the premises in fact don't have planning permission for that you could be in trouble so you must make sure that your premises have got the right permission for that use all businesses have to comply with health and safety legislation and they must uh, conform to employment legislation I don't think for example that the conditions shown on this one would conform to modern employment legislation so the 57 hour week for children I'm afraid is no longer there no more cheap labor sole traders have certain advantages they have little set up costs uh, in the case of m many uh, carpenters electricians plumbers and so on they often have their own tools and may have come from a larger organization before they set up business if they're working out of their own home then there's no uh, cost for the premises so not a great deal of capital is required the big advantage for a sole trader is you get to keep all the profit after any taxes have been paid of course for yourself and of course another advantage is you are responsible for everything you can make your own decisions you're independent you are if you like you're in control of your business you can choose which hours to work you can choose when to take holidays 
you can respond to customer requirements and you can produce one-off items if need be. Because you're a small business you often have better relationships with customers. It's a one-to-one -one service or a personal service uh, and some businesses actually charge a premium for that. If you are a sole trader you might well be able to get government grants to assist you. Well, uh, they tend to be rather scarce these days. There are of course disadvantages. Uh, if you are a sole trader you've got unlimited liability. This is very important. The owner is responsible for all debts. If you go into debt then someone can claim from your own assets including your own property, your car, your television, your computer, whatever. You could lose everything, all your savings. So it's a big risk in that sense. So if you are unsuccessful then you are in trouble. Uh, also a lot of uh, people work for very little reward. Uh, not every uh, sole trader is making piles and piles of money. Not everyone's going to the costas every two months or whatever. Uh, similarly, there's the risk of personal illness. If you are the only person working in the business and you become ill, then you have problems because if you've got to get cover and you might not be able to get suitable cover. If you're ill for a very long time, the business may have to close. When the situation comes when you die, um, then sometimes you can pass the business on to another member of the family, which often happens in farming but very often the business simply ceases to exist. Uh, it's difficult for small businesses or, and so sole proprietors to obtain money. Banks aren't uh, very willing to lend money to uh, sole traders so very often it's a matter of having to use your own savings to set a business up which isn't always the best risk that you want to take. So those are disadvantages, right? Um, if you are independent of course there are further disadvantages there's no one to share the decision making with um, so it doesn't mean to say that your decisions are always going to be the best. It's not easy to take holidays. Farmers it's usually a 52 weeks a year job um, and equally as things change you've got to change so you may have to learn new skills. That particularly applies to people who set up in IT related businesses and as we mentioned before long term illness can be a problem. If you're a sole trader there are legal risks too. You can be sued by customers and all assets are at risk just as if you make a loss all assets can be at risk if you go into debt. And of course sole traders are much easier to sue than large companies. People often forget that. Sole traders have to uh, perform all, all tasks um, whereas larger businesses can in, uh, employ people for specialist tasks like human resources, accountants and so on. So sole traders are usually small businesses and don't benefit then from economies of scale. They very often do not get discounts on purchases. Now in contrast to that, um, partnerships are an extension if you like of the idea of sole traders but they carry with them a few advantages. Let's just look at the advantages. Um, first of all of course what is a partnership? Well a partnership is uh, when two or more people join together uh, with a common view to pr making a profit and they carry on a business and that's defined in a Partnerships Act which goes all the way back to 1890. There can be up to 20 joint owners and if you look at uh, dentists, accountants, uh, real estate agents very often you do find people joining together to form a partnership there. Partnership has to have a legal document which states each partner's rights, uh, how much capital they contributed in the first place, how any profit or loss is to be shared amongst the partners, what will be the procedure to end the partnership, and so on. Um, responsibilities for each partnership. If there is no partnership agreement, then there is in fact a law which simply states that the Partnership Act will be applied. Uh, and that means that profits are share, shared equally amongst partners. Uh, so if you've contributed 70% and your partners consider, uh, contributed 30%, you might as well have a legal document which states that the profits are distributed in the same way, otherwise your partner's going to get 50%. The advantages for a partnership are there are no legal formalities needed to set up a partnership, although as we've said it's advisable to have an agreement. 
There's no legal requirement to publish accounts, although the tax authorities have to have access to accounts. If you have two or more partners, then they can specialize so they become more efficient. You can raise more finance with more people. You can share the workload. You might even be able to take that holiday to the costas. And it's slightly easier to raise capital since there are more assets involved. Of course, the disadvantages are you've still got the unlimited liability. Uh, and there's equal liability for all partners. Uh, disagreements on partners can uh, give uh, problems as well, so that can be a disadvantage. Uh, there's a problem when a partnership uh, is faced with a situation where one partner dies because officially the partnership has then ended and so you have to start with new agreements again and the old partnership is legally just wound up, it's finished. So you start having to make a n new legal agreement. There is a need to be careful with partnerships because if one partner enters into any legal agreement then it's binding on everyone and since the business is unincorporated then in a partnership uh, partners can be sued by customers. The Limited Partnership Act does provide for something else and that is you can have a partnership where one partner provides the capital but doesn't actually take any part in the business. Uh, that's called a sleeping partner. But this partner uh, then has limited liability if this is formed properly under the Partnership Act and that partner cannot be made to sell everything for a business debt although they can still lose everything they put into the business. There is still a limit to 20 partners and at least one of the partners in the business must have unlimited liability. There is now a new form of partnership and this dates to the year 2000. The Limited Liability Partnership Act, you might want to find out a little bit more about. Uh, in this type of partnership, a limited liability partnership, all partners have limited liabilities and businesses must file annual reports to the Register of Companies. That ends our podcast brought to you by Park Bench Tutors, narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening.